So hello everybody and welcome to our Indo-German live talk. Uh, today we have the pleasure to have panelists from uh, Sweden, from Poland and from India. So we start with um, Marta. Hi Marta, uh, Marta Kraus from uh, Poland. Uh, nice to have you with us. Hello everybody, nice to be here. Hello. And we will tell our audience a little later uh, what you are doing, your festival director, but uh, we will come later to that point. And hello, Julia, you're in Malmö, Sweden. Hi, Julia. Yes. Hello, everybody. And then we have Jitendra Mishra. He's live from Delhi or New Delhi in India. Hi, Jitendra. Hello, namaste. Namaste, namaste. <laughs> and uh, please give also a warm welcome to Raman Deep Jaswal. He is from our partner Radio Apna Frankfurt. Uh, this is an online radio from Frankfurt. Hi, Raman. Hi, Stefan. And hi, everyone. Thanks for joining with us. And it's really a pleasure to be co-host with Stefan on this talk today. Thank you. Okay, Raman, it's your take. Uh, please start with the first question. All right. So thank you, Stefan, for giving it over to me. Again, first of all, a very warm welcome to all three of you and thanks for taking out the time. Well, there is a saying, let's start with ladies. Yeah, so ladies first. So here, if you allow me, maybe I start with Yulia first. So thank you, Yulia, for taking out the time. Now, I mean, you are, you are the festival director at Buff Film Festival. Yes, the largest, The largest film festival for a young audience in Sweden since 2012. Now you believe that story is told from a young perspective and rich a challenge and rich and challenge people of all ages. And I personally agree with that completely. Yeah. Now this year Buff Film Festival was to be held in March 2020, but as per the official website, the plan has been postponed, right? So how difficult was it for you to take this decision? And when are you now thinking of bringing the festival back in action this year? Well, it wasn't a very difficult decision to make. We had uh, just received the restrictions that we could only gather 500 people. And it was uh, 10 days before we were supposed to um, uh, start up the festival. And since we have large cinemas, but there are so many people around, we decided that uh, it was to go against the restrictions if we uh, if we got on with our plans so we had to pull the plug and uh, postpone the whole festival unfortunately and i mean any plans of when you are planning to bring this back or are you still waiting for the situation to clear up for you uh, we um our plan is to um, to screen some of the films that we uh, uh, had selected for the 2000 and 20 edition. Uh, we're going to focus on the films in competition because we still want to give out the prizes. We have a short film competition, uh, an international um, a feature film for children uh, with eight films from all over the world and also a youth film uh, competition. Yeah. Uh, and it's quite a lot of award money and we want to be able to screen these uh, very special and new films. But we also want to give the chance to the filmmakers to, uh, to compete with their films. Um, yes. So we, uh, I think the restrictions in Sweden is now you cannot gather any more than 50 people. And the cinemas are starting to open. Uh, actually, uh, actually this week, uh, one of uh, our um, art cinemas in, in Malmö is opening, so it's really nice. But they still have the restrictions. So they, they are preparing um, in order for us to, uh, to screen our films there. But it will be in a very, very um, smaller um, scale of, of kids in the audience, which is very unfortunate. But we feel like we really want to put the, the kids in front of the cinema anyway. So we, we're going to try to, to do a very much smaller um, festival, but still, uh, and it's going to be taking place in, in the end of September. Okay, so end of September is the time to look forward to, to the film festival in Sweden then, yeah? Yeah, and okay. it's also going to be like for, for local uh, children and families. Um, so I, yeah, because we want to uh, not, not to be, um, yeah. 
yeah, we're yeah. not going to host large parties or anything like that. So. Yeah. A lot of things are impacted because of COVID or coronavirus. And definitely film festival is has not been an exception to that. So no. that's that's unfortunate, but it's still good to see that the spirit is there and we are still trying to make it happen as, as uh, much as we can. So now, thank you. Thank you for taking it up. Uh, with that, maybe I can move to Mata. So Mata, a little bit background to yourself, just as an introduction to the audience. Uh, from 2010 till 2014, you have been the director of the Children's Film Festival in Krakow. And from 2014 till now, you are the director of the International Film Festival for Children and Youth, Kino Loop. Now, Kino Loop is an international film festival organized since the year 2015, and it is a non-commercial event visited each year by approximately 11,000 viewers. And normally, this film festival takes place in June every year. How is the plan for this year? Well, actually, there's no plan because we had to cancel. And uh, I mean, in, um, in June, uh, we had to cancel. Uh, we post first, we postponed it to, to autumn this year. But uh, last, year, last week, we've decided that uh, it's not happening because of the risk because we won't be able to reach the children. Uh, we, wa we are not aware, like we don't have any um, strict information about schools and uh, schools are 90% uh, of our audience. Uh, so it was a hard decision, but then we had to take that decision and we uh, finally, we postponed it to next year. We have the program ready. So we've decided to, to screen the same films that we've chosen uh, for, for the program uh, next year. Okay. So it's uh, like um, uh, due to respect to filmmakers of course, yes. and our audience. Uh, but yeah, it's not happening now. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a surprising news for me because when I checked the website, I could see that the selection list was already there. So 10 feature films and 63 short films were already published on the website. But uh, now, yeah, as I said, coronavirus has not been playing along with all of us in a very positive way, isn't it? We were also considering going online and screening shorts. Uh, but, um, you know, our festival is happening uh, in, in June, in, usually in June, in 10 to 15 places which are small cities, small towns, small, sometimes villages. And uh, it's uh, like, a, it's, it's very festive. So for, for the kids in, in smaller places, it's important to, to be there, to, be, uh, to meet the, the, the directors, the actors, the producers. So it won't be the same if we do that online. Yeah, you're right. So I mean, the, the, the whole festive feeling of it basically goes away because it, it becomes more digital, right? So, right. yep, you're, you're uh, bang on there. Well, with that, let me move to Jitendra. So Jitendra, again, thank you for taking out the time for us. So you are one of the few Indian film producers and promoters who have been able to create a benchmark in alternate method of film production, distribution and promotion on an international level. And you are also the festival director of the leading children and youth film festival in India, SIFSI, which is Smile International Film Festival for Children and Youth since its inception. So, and I mean, for, for you, the situation is a little bit different because normally the uh, festival takes place in December. So how's it looking uh, for this year further? Actually, we are very optimistic and uh, we are already planning for a normal festival uh, in December. Uh, we have started, uh, we have opened for call, uh, submission call for entry. Uh, so we are preparing as if, like, with the belief that everything will be all right by December. Uh, okay. Also, uh, we are planning for uh, an online as a backup. Um, if things are not changed, then we will go for an online festival this time. But uh, of course, we are uh, on the preparation. Yeah, so being optimistic is the way forward here. Just imagine things will turn up correctly. I mean, yes, there is also uh, some months till December and hopefully by then things will come back to normal. Yeah, Yeah. Ho hope is the only vaccine now. 
exactly so, oh, yeah absolutely right. right there i agree yeah, with we, you we we have that <laughs> yeah with that i give back to stefan yeah um jitendra is very nice to see you here because uh, some of our audience may remember um your visit last year um when you have uh, brought the film The Last Kana to Indodrome Film Week in Berlin. That was really a great moment together with Vikas Kana. Um, and uh, let's take that because the theme of The Last Kana is also about uh, children and, uh, and the um, circumstances children grow up in uh, India and that's special circumstances. But um, let's move our questions a little bit more how children scope with the COVID-19 situation. So I would like to ask Marta as the first of the three, um, how the situation in Poland, how are the children coping with the situation of, of the corona pandemic? Well, of course it's better now because we have summer holiday and we can go out. The, the lockdown is no longer there. So uh, after almost uh, three months, Uh, of being a uh, lockdown, <laughs> the kids and their energy and their need to to go out to do things to go out there is uh, is was a big one. So now they're um, as 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 long as I see it, they are very happy to enjoy uh, sport activities and to, to just be outdoor. But during that time, in the three months, they had to spend uh, at home. It was uh, it, it was quite a challenge, and I have neighbors here uh, that have four children, and so I could actually experience how how difficult for them it was to stay at home, and especially when it comes to the the energy that they that they wanted to, uh, you know, go out with. Uh, so they were hoping for uh, for the situation to change and. Uh, for, for uh, finishing school and, uh, and starting summer holiday. Yeah, I think especially during the lockdown and the first um, uh, month of the, of the pandemic, when the lockdown came, I, th I think it was very difficult for children and for the families. For maybe for the first days it was okay, then it was like a game, yeah? so we hide uh, at home. But uh, later, then not uh, being able to go out or meet other children, so it must have been a big problem. No? Mm -hmm. uh, how how is it in Sweden, Julia? How because you had also in Sweden a little different uh, situation because the lockdown was not so like in other countries, or? Yes, we are uh, the black sheep of uh, <laughs> <laughs> of the European <laughs> Union. Uh, we never, we ne never had lockdowns. Um, we uh, most of the kids in school continued uh, as um, almost normal. Um, the high schools and um, uh, universities uh, were closed. It was uh, distance, distance um, education. Uh, but most of the kids uh, were still in school. Uh, and and that has a lot to do with uh, how we look on societies and uh, and you know uh, domestic violence and, and all those sorts of things uh, that they also put together in the pot and uh, uh, they, they thought it was it was important for the kids to to have the school to go to and and so on and so forth. Um, so it's been. It's not been normal because there are a lot of uh, things that. Uh, Uh, children are used to be able to do and not just cinema, but I mean some sport activities and and um, Parties and and going to see grandparents and all those things that have been very difficult and I think it's it's uh, it's quite nice how um, How we all have been Learning so fast how to communicate like this for instance like an online seminar and and um, I mean uh, young children with their grandparents and and um, and all sorts of things um but i if i if i may i want to pick up on something that marta said before and it was uh, how important uh, it is to um, to screen the films that we screen all of us uh in the cinema and having the cinema as a meeting place 
because I mean, everybody understands that it's not this. It's not the same to to uh, do an online festival. Of course, it's going to be very different. It's it might be a good alternative, but I think it's uh, it's so important that we emphasize on the the importance of the cinemas, the, the actual rooms where the kids meet from different parts of uh, the society and different parts of the municipality and uh, and actually share the same film experience. And I think that's something that uh, um, kids and, and also us adults really are very eager to start uh, to go to the cinema. And I think that's why festivals are so important because we give them the opportunity um, to be a part of that, to um, to watch films where they are supposed to be uh, screened. Maybe I was off the topic, but but I think uh, there are a lot of um, people right now that are really looking forward to uh, to ev everything going back to normal and being able to um, um, explore uh, mm -hmm. different parts of the world, even though it's through cinema for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jitendra, how was it, is it in India? So cinemas are closed since mid-March and children can't go. And normally in India, the situation is that the whole family goes to see a family movie. You know, that's uh, yeah. I think the, the, the normal situation. Um, can you tell us more about the situation of children during COVID? Because in India still, uh, Corona pandemic um, is, is, is a big thing and uh, Uh, yeah, because there are many red zones and the meaning of uh, regional lockdowns still uh, still are there, correct? Yes. Yes, uh, cinemas are not open, uh, but I think uh, like children in India, uh, they have adopted this new normal. Uh, this is called new normal, like uh, they have adopted this virtual uh, world because they are much, much, updated they are much informed uh, about the pandemic they know this is a like situation we have to accept it and we have to adjust so i think uh, most of the children they uh, they have been engaging them uh, through this virtual medium watching online films we have so many ott platforms we have so many digital platforms providing this kind of content But uh, most of the schools, they started online classes in India. That's a, that's a beautiful thing they started. And uh, like as if uh, like the regular thing was happening, uh, they started this online thing and uh, the, they had the school. They, they didn't have to you know, uh, miss all the classes, uh, but of course it was virtual uh, and uh, but So they are also the most affected elements in the society because uh, children, uh, grown-up people, they they uh, they can engage themselves in many other ways because offices also started. Uh, people are going outside to, for their job, but children uh, they don't have much uh, to do now. Uh, so uh, definitely, I think they have uh, they are getting acquainted to this virtual world. Stefan, you are on mute, but I understood that you are calling my name. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, maybe we can uh, come back to Julia here. So Julia, you you touched up on upon the awards at Buff Film Festival. I mean, the best film for children award, which is a uh, hundred thousand Swedish krona as an award money, which is approximately ten thousand euros when we see it in the terms of euros. Also for best film for young people, the same amount of award and best short film, which is 50,000 Swedish krona around 5,000 euros. It's First actually 10,000 uh, 10, euros. Uh, it's also, uh, as much as the, the feature films. Ah, okay. So yeah, yeah. The, the website gave me the information. So oh, yeah. then we need to change that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, Anyways, I mean, first of all, it's great to see that such awards are given at the film festival, which also not only promote the films, but also gives a boost to the good content makers, so to say. Mm. Yeah. Now, I mean, what is the selection process for the winner of these awards? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, different from the different... Uh, um, prices actually because we cooperate for the the short film award it's uh, the region of skåne 
Um, the best uh, feature children film uh, is uh, the city of Malmö, where we are, that gives out the uh, award. So they, ch um, the city of Malmö, they choose uh, a few jury members, and we get to choose two of them. Jetendra was uh, part of uh, the last edition that we, uh, we actually had. Marta has also been in the jury, I think, or in in uh, some of our juries. Um, so it's it's uh, it's different from uh, the different parts of um, uh, yeah, in terms of what, what price it is uh, and what their criteria is, pretty much. Uh, but it's both uh, uh, creators, um, I mean, uh, distributors, and and all sorts of people in the industry. But it's also another perspective as well. Um, no, thank you. Thank you for bringing it. And then moving on to the same topic uh, to Marta here. I mean, Marta also at Kino Loop, we know there is an award that is given out. And I mean, the competition basically is happening between 40 to 60 productions, both feature and short films, uh, which are presented and awarded at Kino Loop International Film Festival. The winners are chosen by a professional adult jury, as well as children's jury that award the financial award and the Kino Lot statuette as well. I mean, how, how did you get into the idea of involving children here? And what is the age group, basically, who, who are part of this jury? Well, I think that among um, young audience uh, film festivals, it's quite popular to have a young audience jury. It's, uh, like it's, it's for them, so they should decide uh, which film is the best one. And uh, we can see the difference, like how they vote and how the, the adult, uh, the professional jury vote. Sometimes it happens that it's the same, uh, they have the same candidate, but sometimes it's totally different. So their perspective can be, can be absolutely different. But it's important to have a young audience jury, a youth jury, because uh, uh, it's also a lesson for us, because when we, when we talk to them, when we hear them, we can see what's important for them in yeah. the movies. Uh, we can actually, uh, you know, uh, when we choose uh, films uh, for uh, next festivals, we can uh, remember what's, what's uh, important for them and we can, uh, you know, pick the movies that actually involve the, the teams that, uh, that they're uh, choosing. Yeah, exactly. And I think with the age level as well, the interest and the uh, kind of taste changes a lot. I have a 10 years old son. I mean, when he was a bit younger, I was watching the same movie like Cars again with him because that was the movie that he wanted to see. And now he's, he's watching some content that is like above my head. I, I, can't, I can't really figure out what he, it's something called Yu-Gi-Oh! And I, I can't sit with him through that. So yes, I mean, it's, it's also the age factor that, that brings that uh, variation, isn't it? You know, we have uh, children who are no longer children because they're almost uh, adults uh, that uh, has, uh, have been uh, with us since uh, 2015. And if uh, they started be, um, as a young jury and now they're, they're in another category and we see how they develop, how they improve, how they change and, and also how, they, how involved they, they get into into choosing and to discussing the movies and sometimes you know it's we can see how uh, motivated they are and how ambitious they are yeah and yeah. it's uh, you know it, it's great for us to to be there and to to be part of their film journey yeah no it sounds wonderful i mean uh, now moving on to sifsi with jitendra uh, i mean jitendra i i saw it on the website you also have the young jury uh, presence in the selection of the winners and with the age actually ranging between eight years and 16 years. Yeah. Yes. So how, how do you manage that large variation of age and do, do you really get exactly what you need from there or is it different from your expectations? Yes. Uh, like we have uh, actually two different sections in young jury itself. Uh, we have youth jury and also children jury. So the, the age group, like the smaller uh, children, they are in the children jury and the little bit older, uh, you know, they are in the youth. 
okay. but the main objective is uh, the, to encourage them in terms of uh, expressing their uh, emotions what they think about uh, so it's a kind of freedom of expression uh, so we create a platform uh, uh, not just judge the film but uh, they should uh, open up they should come forward to tell what they think about it what they want to say so that's why we have kept this range uh, and uh, uh, of course uh, they are, they are also filmmakers uh, children filmmaker we have another section but the main objective is to freedom of expression for them right and i think it's also important that at such a young age they they also get into the habit of taking the decisions yeah when you have to choose between two or three things you make a decision for that i mean again uh, while i'm talking to you jitendra i i also read that in 2019 you gave a very important statement it was like a major part of the festival and corresponding panel discussion focused on climate change environment and cleanliness and i think it is very important topic to bring to the younger section of the society in developed countries as well as in developing countries including india so how did this became an important part of cfc 2019 yes yeah, so like every like the, this is the most important topic i think climate because if the climate is not there if the environment is not there then we are not there so yeah. uh, we have to understand the world is our home we just have to save it not just our own house or home but the entire world so and children they should they should uh, believe in this thing and they should uh, start their preparation uh, so i think it's very important to uh, create awareness among young minds regarding the most important topic which is climate change and also uh, loneliness means like now now uh, like i gave that statement in 2019 but now you can see people are feeling actually lonely during this covid lockdown they are going into depression they are going into you know mental trauma because they are actually feeling lonely uh, they they cannot go to school they cannot go to playgrounds they cannot uh, go to meet their friends so this is also important topic uh, for the next generation we we should not feel uh, lonely we have to create that environment around us so that we should always feel like we have people we have the society we have the family uh, we have friends so i think that's that's something uh, we wanted to uh, you know uh, nurture and uh, and yeah yeah create awareness among uh, children and youth yeah no i think it's it's very important and honestly said it's a wake up call according to me for all of us what covid has taught us that we we need not go towards more and more money environment yes. plays a big role and uh, it's it's very important that at an early age we start bringing these values into kids and thank you very much that you actually took this step already in 2019 and i really congratulate you for doing that and i hope that you will continue doing that further and we all will also help by doing our part of it with that i give back to stefan yeah i would like to um take the same question uh, more or less to martha and julia so about the topics uh, in the film festival is it also a topic in your uh, festival so how was it uh, 2019 in your festivals um has it been a topic environment or can you tell us a little bit more about the topics which are um let's say on the top 10 of the of the filmmakers who bring the films to your festivals well we we don't have like a special a section dedicated to to this topic but we uh, our festival is mostly based on shorts not without the reason because we uh, when we select the short movies we uh, try to emphasize on topics and problems which are uh, which children and world has to deal with so we have films on uh on climate change on uh, intercultural um difficulties on uh, on on many uh, on problems that children all around the world have to deal with on uh, military conflict conflicts 
So we try to, to screen to show uh, topics which are, uh, which are important for kids. Uh, we actually did have, I don't know how famous uh, Greta Thunberg is, uh, but maybe you remember her. Uh, a young Swedish um, environment activist, uh, which we were talking a lot about a few years ago, and I mean, uh, are still, because she's uh, very empowering uh, and started this whole um, Friday strike uh, among a lot of kids all around the world. Uh, so, we the, uh, some of the previous uh, editions uh, we talked about role models, and I think it was it was a way of uh, um, picking up things from films that were actually good role models. It, I mean, bad role models can also be useful when you discuss like what to do or or not. Um, so, so we were. Uh, around that topic and I think there are even more films uh, on that topic that are coming hopefully um, not just documentaries but actually brave films about um, um, what can happen um, if we don't take care of our world and I think it's also interesting what um, uh, what you said you tender about the, the loneliness that I mean we have a way of, of choosing films that we think are a mirror to a lot of kids that maybe do not see themselves on the big screen normally but if you choose film from a wider perspective like the entire world um, and not just uh, uh, the ones that are commercially uh, you know up on the, on the, the cinemas um, I think that is a way of, of seeing somebody that can mirror you and I think also like communication on YouTube or um, yeah, those kinds of uh, social media platforms are also very important for, um, for us to, to, um, to see that, oh, maybe I have a friend, but that person is uh, on the other side of the earth, uh, but we can have a communication and we can be uh, a part of this um, pandemic uh, together uh, and so on. Um, I mean, stories are always important, and I think that can help in this situation a lot. Uh, Julia, you also um, introduced a very interesting uh, initiative in Sweden. This is Cinema and Hospitals, if I get it yeah. right. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? It's actually, uh, it's been going on for quite a long time, and we, uh, we actually ended up with two partners, uh, Jeff, um, um, the Belgian film festivals in Antwerp and um, Bruges and, and uh, some a few cities around there uh, and uh, another organization in Croatia uh, and uh, we, um, we 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 uh, choose uh, a part of our program that we put on uh, um, a platform uh, and that we launch uh, in all or most of the Swedish uh, children ho hospitals uh, that are a part of this um, project. Um, so that's actually what we did this March because those were the only films that could actually be, la be launched uh, was that they got to have a little festival, uh, children in hospitals. And uh, it's very easy. It's like you get a login and you create an account and then you can choose from our films. And, um, you can filter whatever if you want to see a short film or a feature or an animation or how old you are and what your interests are. Um, so it's it's like a very small Netflix, but we have curated the program uh, with only super good films. Very nice, very nice. And I heard about that India stole the idea. Or didn't, is it correct? <laughs> we, we, we haven't, uh, like, we, we are inspired by Yulia. Uh, mm. we, uh, yeah, we met, uh, actually, uh, it was a discussion in Greece uh, three years back. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a conference and uh, I, I, I was not aware, like, I knew it, but I learned uh, in Greece when we, we were together and I was inspired by that idea. It was so beautiful. And it was 
uh, way ahead of time actually so it's it's more uh, the value we can evaluate at this hour when uh, it's a health related situation you know uh, across the globe uh, so uh, yeah we we started it last year <laughs> in our festival not very in a, not in a big scale but yeah we started it we have started no but it's really it's a great idea i'm um, didn't yeah. hear about that in germany so um i think and it's a good thing uh, so sorry about the word i used i think it's a good thing to um to do the same in all over the world you know because it's such a brilliant idea everybody should do it it's just the uh, and it's not about uh reaching like the the large audience it's to reach like somebody that mm -hmm. maybe has an opportunity to see something else and especially and that's also what you find out when you do a co cooperation with other countries that we see um, the hospital situation and, and children that are ill in different ways. In Sweden, it's like if if your child is sick, then the whole family is sick. Uh, yes. And so so you are, I mean, your family move in. If you have to be at the hospital, one or both the parents move in or the siblings or or you often get treated at home. But it's still a way of um, creating something else uh, that they can be a part of and maybe um, uh, like film experience uh, that they can have together that can be special. Um, yeah. So it's super easy and I think everybody should just do it. It's really hard to finance though, which is very, very strange. That's another seminar maybe, how we can finance uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like uh, good culture for, for uh, children, like ill children, sick children. Uh, but it's, uh, we're working on it and I hope it will be uh, easier. Yeah, we should, um, we should shout out for, um, uh, for sponsors. So everybody who's listening to us, please yeah. uh, think about it and get, get in touch uh, with us, uh, with Julia, but uh, you can also uh, write us and we will forward it to Julia or to Kendra, because I think it's a great initiative um, because it's also something against loneliness. It's something uh, which is also great um, in a pandemic because what you also may not forget that even during a pandemic, there are children, there are um, people who need to go into a hospital. Uh, so because of whatever, um, situation and uh, yeah this this is something even during COVID-19 uh, in hospitals in uh, senior homes uh, etc um, we have the problem of, of loneliness because uh, um, because of the uh, pandemic um, you are not allowed to visit your relatives or your kids or your old, um, your seniors um, and so on so forth and Marta and um, you have um, uh, invented an initiative uh, which goes on floor I think next weekend is it correct so can you take uh, tell us a little bit more about that program which uh, you will introduce uh, to Poland or maybe to the world uh, next weekend ah are we talking about the initiative that's happening here in the region the... I guess so yeah the, oh, there's something okay. about literacy and education program for children uh, okay because because yeah. it, it uh... Uh, well, I have to say that I'm um, professionally, I'm, I'm not only a film festival director, I, uh, I run a film office and a regional film fund for the region where I live. So we do have uh, uh, programs for young filmmakers, for school teachers, for kids and for everybody who's interested in, uh, in filmmaking or uh, being part of a film event. So next week we are opening a film tract. Uh, which is showing the uh, film locations in the region for the films that won prizes that went uh, um, globally, like uh, Corpus Christi, which was nominated to Oscar last year, and we are co-producing the movie, or Cold War, which was nominated to, to Oscars two years back. <laughs> so, so there are lots of uh, different activities that we, we take. Uh, but uh, like at the moment, we are also thinking of creating a platform for kids and uh, for young audience. And uh, because um, to every two, three years, we get a license for short movies 
which were screened at the festival. And we, uh, we put it on DVD and we distribute them uh, in schools free of charge. And uh, so that the teachers can, can use it as, as, a, as an educational tool. So this is what we do as our uh, media literacy um, strategy. So there are, there are many things that we try to, to develop here. And because I live um, in a region where there's no film school, there are no real big festivals, film festivals for, for adults. It's, uh, it's, um, it's the film production here is, is quite new. So we try to, to you know, to, to involve people in it and to show them that it's uh, the film uh, is, uh, is not only uh, an, an entertainment, but it's also a good educational, uh, educational tool for kids, young audience. Yeah, so in the end of our talk, we should uh, put that in, uh, in the credits um, uh, that uh, people can reach out to you, Marta, as well as you, Julia, um, for, you, Julia, for the sponsors and uh, Marta for the people who want to shoot in your region. Maybe you can ask, also tell us a little more about the region. So what, is the re what region is it exactly? Um, so we can get a better, better idea of that. It's a Podkarpatskia region, which is, uh, which is in Southeast Poland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have mountains, we have, uh, it's, it, it's, it's considered to be one of the most uh, green region in Poland. Very nice, very nice. So we should go there, uh, Rama, or? Yes, oh, sounds yeah. interesting uh, already. You're <laughs> all invited. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Marta. May I, Stefan? Yeah, please, yeah. please. Okay, thank you. And I mean, there is, there is one saying that the right values at the right age, they, they matter a lot. And according to Indian beliefs, they say that your character as a person is actually finalized by the age between eight and 10 years. Afterwards, your behaviors can change, but what you are as a person kind of gets set by this age because you, you have been receiving a lot of information by then and you're learning very fast. So it kind of becomes as part of you. Having said that, when we talk about some serious matters, for example, climate change and any movies that are made on that, they are normally released with 12 plus year age restriction or sometimes 16 plus, even 18 plus. Yeah. So, and I mean, because they, there are, the, the movie has to be dramatic. The movie has to show what the effect is. And sometimes VFX effects are so heavily put in, they are not appropriate for the children to, to see it. So for younger children, because now you, you are the experts who look at uh, the content that is produced for younger children, is there enough content that brings these right perspectives to kids? Or is there a need for a call to all directors, producers out there that they need to think about this? Maybe I can start with uh, Yulia here on this. Um, well, um, it has been uh, a few years uh, of uh, that we have uh, missed uh, a lot of Swedish films. It, it hasn't been a lot of uh, Swedish uh, children films uh, being made actually that are brave enough uh, for us to screen it. Um, uh, but I think there are quite, I mean, you have to dig really deep. I mean, you have to watch a lot of films to, to actually dig up the, the, the good stuff that uh, that is out there. But I think it would be, uh, even, um, I mean, if it's easier, I think the original ideas um, that people might have in a drawer somewhere, I think it would be very welcome to have, uh, to, to launch uh, a financing project or something um, to create uh, original uh, scripts. And I mean, mm -hmm. I think I was just now when, when uh, Marta talked about her region, I mean, it would be super interesting and cool if if uh, there could be a co-production between different countries and i mean i mean yeah i think uh, i think a lot there should be an we should really emphasize on uh, do making really good stories for a young audience because yeah. as you're saying i mean it's it's where a lot of kids are shaped into who they are so so yeah 
I'm all for it. I think it would be a, a very good initiative. No. Thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Marta, how has your experience been when you select the movies, when you look at the movies? Is there a right content for the right age already available? Or do you see that there is a need for bringing more content for this age group? Hmm. Well, when it comes to our uh, Polish, uh, Polish films, Polish productions, there are not many that we can choose from because, uh, you know, in Poland, the uh, productions for, for families and for children um, was there on a high level, but in the 80s, in the 90s, and then it stopped. So only now it's, uh, it's, uh, it's starting again because of the, uh, the finances. I mean, the, the, there's a financial support from the government for, for family content. But it's uh, that that's not enough. I mean, most of the movies that's uh, uh, being produced are uh, family entertainment. So there is there is a real need for real content. I mean, something beyond family entertainment, something that deals with real problems, topics that are uh, actual that involves children and and take them um, um, in a very um, responsible way mm -hmm. yeah no thank you thank you there moving on to jitendra i mean jitendra you are the closest to the biggest film industry bollywood right um how how has your experience been with the content for kids yeah, but like our uh, tagline the festival tagline is uh, the biggest celebration of good cinema so we only curate films with a message, with, with a valuable message to the younger uh, children. And uh, because uh, our parent organization, Smile Foundation, uh, they have been working for last 18 years with children to empower them, not just uh, empower them uh, in terms of uh, health or education or livelihood thing, but also to empower them uh, mentally. So we always select films and what I have noticed in uh, last 10 years, uh, what I have realized, we have very good content uh, across the globe. Uh, actually, filmmakers are making good content. Uh, we just, uh, like Yulia said, it's a very difficult task to uh, select them. It's a long process. Uh, so we have to do it very, very seriously. Uh, but uh, we have content. People are actually making, they are very sensible about, uh, filmmakers are very sensible to make content driven uh, movies for younger audience. Uh, we just uh, need to bring them and uh, show it to them. Like, uh, like uh, when a mother, uh, you know, uh, uh, serve the platter, the children will have that. Whatever she serve they will have it. So it's our responsibility, it's our duty, duty to bring good content for them. If we show them, uh, like we have so many OTT platforms and uh, we, we, like our culture, even that's against our culture to, you know, show those kind of films, uh, you know, publicly. Uh, so it's time actually to bring uh, good content good content are there in the industry, in the market, across the globe. We just need to bring them. Yeah. And I think that's, that's one of the good word, uh, work that you three are doing. You are selecting that content from across the globe. You are bringing it to the right audience and you are basically f uh, shaping up the future of the world. So yeah, again, thanks a lot for uh, doing this good work and really helping us to have a better future for all of us. Uh, with that, back to Stefan. Yeah, so for our festival, the Indo-German Film Week, which will take place from 24th to 30th of September, uh, we're also considering to um, present some kids and then news films. And my question to you as a specialist and as the expert is, um, how do you deal with fil films which come from a foreign country? Um, how do you manage with the languages? Is there Will there be an over voice or how do you manage so... Uh, if that is not a silent film or so. Um, uh, how do you manage that, uh, at, uh, especially the young kids, uh, which may not be able to read subtitles and so on, um, how do you manage um, to prevent those films to your young audience? 
uh, your question is for me, uh, Stefan? Yeah, or for Julia or for Marta, whoever wants. Uh, yeah, we, like, uh, yeah. yeah, Julia, please. We translate uh, about uh, eight or ten films every year. Um, and uh, the difficulty is to find uh, um, yeah, a good voiceover or if you do it live uh, for the really young audience. Uh, we have tried it a few times. It's, it's pretty nice because it gets like a live kind of to it. So uh, we've done it, um, as I know, several German film festivals do. But we, I, I mean, I think a lot of uh, kids, uh, or when I grew up in Sweden, we got used to reading subtitles really early. So, and that's something that we want to continue um, um, actually forcing the kids to, to read subtitles because it will be difficult otherwise if they don't learn how to do it. Um, so from the year, when you're nine, I think you can read the Swedish subtitles. Um, but we do translate a lot. And, and I know that we are one of few film festivals that actually have professional translators. Um, because we think that's such an important thing uh, that adds to the film if it's really well done, the, the translation. Um, so we pay a lot of money to do that. But, but it's, uh, it's one of the most important things. Do you attend that? Yeah, uh, but we have experimented uh, with all possibilities. Uh, uh, but uh, of course, uh, budget is the main criteria here. Uh, we don't have much budget to, uh, you know, dub the film. Because the, the best way, uh, the uh, most effective way would be dubbing the film. Uh, because uh, subtitle in our language, uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't work here. Um, and uh, uh, we, we tried once also live voiceover that was uh, too disturbing for them. So for the time being, uh, we are showing uh, uh, non-verbal films or animation films with very less dialogue to the younger children and uh, children who can read the subtitle. Uh, so we are showing them, uh, you know, films with English subtitle. Uh, because we have another challenge also, like uh, even if we show Indian films, like from the region, like if we show them uh, Marathi film or Odia film or Sambalpuri film, uh, it's equivalent to French for children in uh, North India. So uh, we have to translate even Indian films also. Uh, so we are waiting for a right kind of partner who can support us, dub these films, then the problem is solved. Oh, that sounds uh, like a very big challenge. Martha, you want to add something? Well, we do the voiceover, but because we have so many places, uh, up to 15, then we don't use DCP. Uh, we use other formats. So we have a studio that prepared the voiceover like a month before the festival. And we send it to send the copies to to our film uh, venue, venues, but uh, when it comes to uh, older children and uh, that's the age category fifteen plus, we do the subtitling. Okay, understand that. Okay, uh, Roman. Yeah, I mean, one question which is probably not very much related to the film festival, but it's always interesting when you're dealing with kids, right? And especially when kids are your main uh, guests, so to say. So any incident that you have in your mind that comes with that, that you have experienced at your film festival uh, that you would like to share with us, which was really interesting or something that you never expected from a kid. Any, any experience that you have to share with us? Well, I have one, I can share it with you. Uh, that happened in Krakow like five years back. Uh, during the festival, a, a girl, she came to, to talk to me and she said that she remembers all the shorts that she watched last year. And she was telling me the plot of the short films. And I was, I was so impressed about her, her engagement, how about her knowledge and how involved she was with the festival. And that was so sweet. 
wow wow well it it shows that how seriously they take those movies and kind of uh, the impression that leaves it on their mind right uh, amazing any any other story from jitendra you yeah but like i have uh, like so many uh, incidents but uh, for me most of them are very emotional because both of them have attended our festival and they have seen it uh, the objective of uh, smile foundation actually to bring both kind of children together under one uh, uh, roof under one platform like from the privileged community children and also not so privileged community so uh, like i have every year i like i really uh, it's emotional because many children they say this is the first time they are watching any film on a big screen oh. uh, that's the you know and and because another initiative uh, by smile uh, we provide food uh, you know proper meal during the they, we give them a an experience cinematic experience a whole day of experience so they watch films and also we uh, we provide uh, meal uh, food uh, during the festival so there are many incidents so uh, i think uh, that's wha- what actually we are doing for so uh, cannot cannot beat any other uh, memory you know yeah. these kind of memories will be always there yeah yeah amazing work that you are doing there yeah and this is this is like it is more than than holding a film festival you are basically leaving an impact on kids lives and that's, that's, that's the beauty what, of smile foundation we are actually blessed because our parent organization is smile foundation and they are already uh, working with millions of children and they have been studying their mindset they have been studying their you know so i think uh, we are not very old as a film festival but i think we have uh, we have been created a benchmark uh, you know uh, so uh, let's see uh, everybody is doing it passionately so yeah <laughs> nice to hear that thank you but it's the same in sweden i mean uh, there are 16 year olds that are in the cinema watching a film for the first time in their life even yeah. though they have been uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. living in 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 malmo their entire life maybe they haven't even been to the city center but the uh, the film gets you know them to to go to the 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 art house uh, cinema and they get to feel or the commercial cinemas that we screen films uh, at also and they get to feel that they are also a part of their city i have another thing can i be if i'm really quick another really beautiful uh, experience that we had we um uh we cooperate with another organization they uh, for deaf people um and we had a film about a deaf boy he wanted to um uh, wrestle uh, it was an iranian film very beautiful film uh and the half of the cinema was uh, uh with hearing uh children and the other half was not hearing children and they we also had a guest uh, one of the actors and we had a discussion about this and the hearing children started to ask in the deaf children like how is it not to hear like explain to us we don't understand and the question went back like well can you explain to us how it is to hear because we don't mm-hmm. and it was such like an awesome conversation that they had that they would never had had if they hadn't shared that film experience with each other and those i mean there are obviously always those experiences like from every festival that you that you do because you meet all these people and you are uh involved in those discussions it, it was really really cool yeah now as i as i also said uh, that it's it's more than just holding a film festival you guys are creating an experience for kids you guys are actually formulating their future and i mean a request also from my side to all the viewers and listeners let's support these film festivals let's do what we can do to actually create a better future for all of us and thank you very much to all three of you for doing this work i mean it's it's a pleasure to be in this call with all of you stefan yeah definitely definitely um before we come to the end uh, i would like to ask jitendra about we and also marta and julia about one world children um this is an initiative um, which started during corona pandemic an, an online festival somehow to say 
Uh, can you explain it a little bit to us, uh, Jitendra? And I heard this will start again in September, correct? Yeah, it's, it's a global campaign uh, started during this COVID lockdown to reach out to global children, uh, to engage them, encourage them and empower them uh, while they are inside home. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, joint initiative, uh, several like-minded uh, international friends, you can say, international organization. Uh, we, we came together and uh, as organizations, we started this campaign just to reach out to global children. And uh, the idea was to utilize this uh, situation as an opportunity because it was, it was actually uh, a conversation between few of our friends. We were playing a game when it started, the, the lockdown started. Uh, everybody had to uh, say one word uh, related to this COVID lockdown. So everybody said several things, but I said opportunity. So opportunity, of course, it's, a, it's an opportunity to reach out to global children sitting at India or sitting at Poland or Sweden. Uh, we can interact with global children. So let's do something. Let's reach out to children, not just show them films, but let them engage them proactively in some kind of activities. So we, we started uh, the phase one of the campaign for uh, two months, uh, eight workshops in eight weekends uh, from different countries in different languages. But of course, uh, the narration was in English for the global thing. Uh, but successfully, we, uh, we have already hosted eight workshops in two months from uh, eight uh, different countries, including Latin America, like Argentina, and also Iran, India, um, Spain. So uh, we, we hosted it, and we have already reached out to more than 60,000 global children uh, in this period. And now uh, we, we have a break because we have so, some other activities and also uh, it's holiday time in many, many countries. So it will resume soon next month in September, mid September maybe. Uh, so that's a honest effort to engage uh, global children so that they should not go into loneliness or depression or this kind of mental, you know, uh, situations, just just engage, engage them, encourage them, and empower them. That's the objective, uh, and it's it's it belongs to no one. It belongs to everyone. Yeah, this is fantastic. I would like to say thanks to all of you. Well, thank you thanks. so much, Martha. We will definitely come and visit your region. Thank you, Julia. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, we can become part of a festival one time. Of course, and of course. Uh, Jitendra, same, same. Hope to see you soon. Uh, either we see you see soon again, or you come over to Berlin. Would be great fun and great pleasure. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for this wonderful initiative. Yes. Stepan, yes. Stepan and Raman. Thank you yes. for the invitation Thank and you. the meeting. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, it was a Thank pleasure. You. See you.